eğer ki hayatımızda hiç eğer olmasaydı nasıl olurdu? Size şöyle söyleyeyim. Her şey daha az parlak, daha az yeşil olurdu ve daha az parlak yeşil. Çünkü eğerler ormanların derinliklerinde tek bir kibritle derinlerin kıvılcımını ateşler. Eğerler Nobel ve Gagenheim'ın aklına takılır ve o kodu bu kodu çözerler. Eğerlerle içinizden haykırmak gelir. Eğerler bariyerleri kırarlar. Asla yalnız yürümezler ve aşırı bulaşıcıdırlar. Eğerler aşikardır ve son anda golü atarlar. Eğerler dünü umursamazlar, robotlarla bile konuşabilirler. Karşı takım soluklanırken oynamaya durmadan devam ederler. Sadece basit bir kelime öyle mi? Hayır. Eğerler asla uyumazlar. Hep daha fazla çaba gösterirler. Eğerler bakar, araştırır ve en beklenmedik zamanda ortaya çıkarlar. Eğerler klonlanarak çoğalırlar. Acaba gerçekten yapabilir misin? Yaptın bile. Eğerler aklınıza girmeye çalışan güler yüzlü şakacılardır. Eğerler kapıları açarlar. Asla kaybetmeyeceklerini bilirler. Ve biraz gün ışığına her zaman hazırdırlar. Her şey bir eğerle başlar. Çünkü eğerler ne zaman dönüşür, ne zamanlarsa şimdi. Ve şimdi nasıl dönüşür, nasılsa asıl. Eğerler bakış açınızı değiştirir. Eğerler oyunu değiştirir. Eğerler dünyayı değiştirir. Biliyoruz. Çünkü biz eğerlerle çalışıyoruz. Yakın Doğu Üniversitesi
Sanchez. And a nice congratulation. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you, Professor Damza Moja and her teams, the organizing committee members for you, for the organizing this event, they invited me for this speech and giving me an opportunity to share my information with you, with students especially. Today I'm going to talk about the application of biotechnology in medicine. Biotechnology is a very important field in scientific research and brings new dimensions and avenues to various other fields of science. Medicine is one of the fields where the tools of biotechnology are used most effectively. So, in this presentation, I'm going to give some information about biotechnology, history of biotechnology, biotechnology applications, biotechnology breakthroughs in medicine, and, and then, lastly, I will give some information about European Biotechnology Society, which I am involved with. Biotechnology is an innovative interdisciplinary field and encompasses a wide range of procedures for modifying living organisms according to human purpose. So related with different sectors actually, including agriculture, veterinary, medicine, pharmaceutical and fine chemicals production. It is emerging as one of the leading biotechnologies for the transition to carbon-free society and for solving critical society challenge, comprising health protection, food and energy supply, and environment protection. So when we look at the history of biotechnology, the history of biotechnology dates back to at least 3,000 BC. Learning about maple seeds, alcohol fermentation, and vinegar making was one of the first biotechnology discoveries. Gregor Mendel, in 1866, discovered of inheritance and known as father of genetics. In 19, he discovered Mendelian inheritance by other scientists. And in 1903, explanation of hereditary crosses. In 1909, Yerk described the first inborn error metabolism in history. In 1938, Alexander Fleming discovered the penicillin. In 1938, the usage of the term molecular biology. In 1948, the first plant reclamation in biotechnology history. Watson and Crick reports the new double heads in 1956. And in 1970, beginning of recombinant DNA technology and genetic engineering. In 1980, the PCR technique developed, which is a very important step for the molecular analysis of genes and molecular genetics. In 1984, DNA fingerprinting techniques developed. In 1988, Human Genome Project approved by Congress and initiated in 1992. In 1997, Dolly, the first sheep cloned in Scotland. In, 19, in 2007, 
first vaccine against tumor papillomavirus virus in 2010, first CD7 created. And very important limited system of genetic disease called CRISPR Cas9 discovered in 19, 2012. And in 2017, FDA approves first leukemia gene therapy. So these new techniques commonly referred to as gene technology involve the modification of organisms by direct incorporation of one or more genes to introduce or alter a specific characteristic or characteristics. Biotechnology is an interdisciplinary branch of science that encompasses a wide range of subjects. The 21st century is called the golden age of biotechnology and its branches. Molecular technology is the application of modern science and technology to living organisms and or biological systems in order to develop new production and or to change existing process for specific users. Biotechnology covers many areas of life science. As I will talk about in more detail shortly, it is very important in medicine, especially in pharmaceuticals, in the development of new treatment, in vaccine studies, and in diagnosis. The invention of biotechnology in the field of medicine are one of the most important reasons for the progress and development of medicine, in particular, methods such as, as gene therapy, next generation sequencing, I will mention above, have led to the emergence of new fields such as personalized medicine and other important projects, whole genome project is the biggest big project in the last century. The Human Genome Project was an international scientific research. It was officially involved in, launched in 1990 with the goal of determining the sequence of nucleotide bispins that make up human DNA. In April 2003, the researchers announced the they had completed a preliminary sequence of the entire human genome. Human Genome Project researchers had disappeared the human genome in three main ways. Determine the sequence of DNA, the full genome, all the bases in the DNA of our genome, making maps showing the location of genes for the main parts of all our chromosomes and producing what are called linkage maps, in which heredity traits such as those for genetic disease can be traced across generations. The outcomes of human genome projects are we described about 22,000 human genes in human genome. This final product of human genome project has provided the world with a detailed source of information on the structure, organization, and the function of all human genes. This knowledge can be though of as the basis set of inheritance, instructions for a human's development and function. So at the end of the human genome project, we are able to give more detail about the disease. We are able to 
develop diagnostic tests. We are able to develop new drugs for certain genetic disease and effective genes can be paired or even regenerated by gene therapy. In molecular medicine, improve our open gene therapy, develop methods of early detection of genetic mutation and susceptibility to disease, design drugs to act as activation or inhibitor of function of different proteins to prevent disease, improve diagnosis of different disease like diabetes, heart disease, schizophrenia, and cancer, reduce and treat genetic disease like amyloidosis, peritonuria, and hypercholesterolemia. The stem cells are cells with the potential to develop into many different types of cells in the body. They serve as a repair system for the body. There are two main types of stem cells, embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. Stem cells are different from other cells in the body in three ways. They can divide and renew themselves over a long Time, they are unspecified, so they can be used for, for producing some organs or some uh, 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 for, uh, for the for the disease. In laboratory, researchers can program stem cells to dif differentiate into specific types of cells. This is where the innovation of biotechnology steps in. Imagine an individual with the degenerative spinal disorders that severely impact the quality of life. With the help of stem cells research, it might be possible to grow these stem cells in vitro in a lab setting and then implement that into the affected individuals, but maybe another fascinating issue with related to biotechnology is three-dimensional printed organs. Artificial limbs, as you have been in use for centuries, and there has been a steady improvement in the mobility and versatility of bionic limbs. Due to global organ shortage and limited organ donors, thousands of patients are left wanting organs and tissues in case of severe injuries, illness, and or genetic conditions. Many of these patients die before transplants are available. Tissue engineering is an emerging field that works on producing artificial tissue and organ substitute as permanent solutions to replace or repair damage. Next generation sequencing is a massive parallel sequencing technology that offers ultra high group scalability and speed. The technology is used to determine the order of nucleotides in the entire genome or target regions of DNA or RNA. The spectrum of DNA variation in a human genome comprises small base changes, substitutions, insertions, and deletions of DNA large genomic additions of exons or whole genes and rearrangements such as inversions and translocations. The technology is based on the simultaneous and parallel processing of each part of a DNA molecule obtained from a single sample separated into millions of parts. 
This powerful tool is revolutionizing field, such as personalized medicine, genetic disease, and clinical diagnostic by offering a high throughput option with the capability to sequence multiple individuals at the same time. Another tool at the Human Genome Project is gene therapy. With the development of gene therapy technology, the modeling of genetic disease also increased. Genome editing, also called gene editing, is a group of technologies that give science the ability to change organisms' DNA. These technologies allow genetic material to be edited, removed, or altered at the particular location in the genome. Several approaches to genome editing have been developed. After my speech, my colleague and my friend, Professor Shirima is going to give more details about this technology. So this technology is called CRISPR-Cas9. So I'm going to give this uh, detailed information to my colleague for next speech. Liquid biopsies are non-invasive blood tests that detect circulated tumor cells and fragments of tumor DNA that are shedding the blood from the primary tumor and from metastatic sites. Liquid biopsy can be used at various stages in the care pattern of cancer patients from screening to monitoring of treatments and understanding drug resistance mechanisms. So, can we use security for early detection, profiling cancer, developing personalized treatment, monitoring treatment, assessing possible recurrence. Another subject developed after the Human Genome Project is synthetic biology. Synthetic biology broadly refers to the use of computer-assisted biological engineering to design and construct new synthetic biological parts, devices, and systems that do not exist in nature and redesign existing biological organisms. So synthetic biology is related with biology, system biology, engineering, bioinformatics, math, chemistry, and biotechnology, mainly, is a growing discipline that has two subfields. One uses unnatural molecules to reproduce emergent behaviors from natural biology with the goal of creating artificial life. The other six interchangeable parts from natural biology to assemble into systems that act unnaturally. Minimal genome is another uh, fascinating area for research. An organism or cell with the minimum number of genes required to survive is called minimal genome or set. The concept of a minimal genome has appeared as an attempt to answer the question what the minimum number of genes or minimum amount of DNA to support life is. Currently, the most popular cause of studies on a minimum genome belongs to mycoplasma in fact. So most attempts to define a minimal genome focus on the minimal protein coding gene set, ignoring functional RNAs, regulatory 
and other non-coded sequences and the organization of these elements on chromosomes. Therefore, in fact, they only represent the core of hypothetical minimum general additions. This study is needed to refer to practical levels of biological organization. So essential genes are absolutely essential for cell survival. Therefore, the determination of the universal minimum gene set required for survival is important in applications in medicine and synthetic biology. The size of a minimum genome can be considered to be limited by the physical size of the DNA molecule that can reproduce rather than the amount of genetic information. Biotechnology drugs, therapeutic proteins, are very different from conventional small molecular drugs in terms of the molecule size as well as the reputation, side effects, stability, and formulation. Biopharmaceuticals, which are quite complex due to these properties, can be purified to say, in a longer period than clinical drugs. Any charges that may occur in the production process can also change the effects of the final products. Synthesis of some endogenous active substances was made possible by recombinant DNA technology, like using rotor, electrophoric, interferon, recombinant vaccines, etc. First, I guess, uh, is the tolerance of medical treatment to the individual characteristics of each patient. The approach relies on scientific breakthroughs in our understanding of how persons unique molecular and genetic profile makes them susceptible to a certain disease. This same research is increasing our ability to predict which medical treatment will be safe and effective for each patient and which ones will not be. The advantage of personalized medicine reduce diagnostic burden, focusing on prevention, even predictive and preventive. Reduce the duration and severity of the disease, increase benefits and reduce risks. So this three P preventive, predictive and personalized is very popular clinical approach nowadays. The study of the variation of DNA and RNA characteristics as related to drug responsive is critically important area of personalized medicine. Seeks to understand how different in genes and their expression affect the body's response to medications. Use genetic information such as DNA sequence gene expression and copy number for a purpose of explaining inter-individual differences in drug metabolism, pharmacokinetics, and physiological drug response, pharmacodynamics. <coughs> the term pharmacogenetics evolved from the combination of two areas of study, namely pharmacology and genetics. Pharmacogenetics refers to genetic differences in metabolic pathway, which can affect individual responses to drugs, both in terms of therapy and adverse effect. Pharmacogenetics helps our understanding of why some individuals respond to 
drugs and other sport. And why some require higher or lower therapeutic responses? Finally, I would like to mention my society I involved already, European Biotechnology Association, so called FKM, European Biotechnology Thematic Network Association. This association is in 1996 created by a European project, by a colleague from Italy, and then converted to association in 2007. And then after that time, this association is organized in different European countries and worldwide. I'm involved in this society since 2004. And I, I am already president of the society since 2011. So the aims of the society is arranging activity in education, innovation, and industrial relations with in different countries. Countries actually in need so much, and I'm really proud to be in, in Cyprus here to have collaboration with the nearest university with my colleagues and the Turkish Security Society as a European society. Uh, we are about 52 countries representative and each year we organize different uh, educational activities based on students and also professional congress in European in different universities. Thank you very much for your attention and this. Are there any questions or contributions from the audience? We can accept a couple of questions if you have any. Doctor, thank you very much for your nice presentation. Uh, we enjoyed very much. I have a question for pharmacological technology. Today, in classical medicine, we use the, uh, all of the medicine, all of the drugs, uh, by, for example, intravenous or orally, and all drugs distributed uh, whole of the body, everywhere, uh, with it. even sometimes unwanted organs or in, uh, some unwanted uh, tissues always receive the drugs without any at least un, uh, unwanted effects, right? Sometimes we have harmful effects also. But we need in technology, we expect the technology to have uh, organ targeted or the uh, tissue targeted drugs. Is it possible for today's technology? Thank you very much for it. Yes, I think the most important uh, effect of biotechnology drug is to have precise target for precise set receptor. Yeah. Because you, you are producing proteins or enzymes for precise receptor. So this is, I think, this is the advantage of biotechnology compared with the pharmaceutical, plastic pharmaceutical drug. Possible. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Thank you. This. And maybe Shayna, Professor Shayna, what do you speak of? But I didn't do like that. I'm just exercising my hand okay. because of broken hand. Sorry, but, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I can just answer that with nanotechnology, it's possible with nanocarriers, and uh, I think that in the near future, all drugs are going to be like that. And 
the other organs are not going to be affected. It's nice. I think that me, yes. because the, even uh, some unwanted it's not only unwanted, but they were also being cultivated yes. really important because we always spent too much money to be without any effort. Yes, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is this person alive, Peter? Yes, this is the kind of person I think. So. This is for the professor from pharmacology department. Uh, I want to uh, some little explanation for uh, the third uh, question. There are big uh, study about the drug delivery systems. Drug delivery systems aims to uh, go to drugs to uh, exact uh, sites. For example, uh, two of students tomorrow will, uh, will uh, present some uh, speech about this topic. One of them, for example, exosomes, exosomes, you know, uh, drug and nanoparticles, some nanoparticles uh, take the drug to exact uh, size. If you listen tomorrow, there are a, a, a lot of uh, information about this study. Thank, Thank you very much for reminding this uh, transport system. Actually, yes, you interpreted uh, very precise receptors on the exome, for instance, to go to, for instance, ACE receptors, right? Yeah. And the exome is big or very good. Vehicle transport, same to transport genetic material. Thank you. So, yes, yes, and so this it is possible, of course. Yes. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, I would like to thank Professor Monis Gunnar for your First of all, I would like to thank the organization committee and all the Faculty members that were had a huge contribution for this congress as well. And it's an honor to be the first chair at the congress actually. So, before you might be the second speaker of today, I would like to give a brief information about the um, lecture. After graduation from Ted Ankara College, Professor Dr. Sheikh Mujusin Temer completed her education at Bursa Umbra University, Particular Medicine. She received her doctorate degree in histology and embryology from Bursa Umbra University, Health Science Institute. For two years, she worked and participated in many uh, national institute of health projects in America as a visiting scientist at the University of Kentucky, the Department of Anatomy and Neuroscience. During this period, she worked on the female reproductive system, neuroendocrine mechanisms, and aging. She completed her second undergraduate degree in Eskishire, Anatomy University, Department of Business Administration. She became an associate professor in 2013. Between 2012, in 2017, she worked as a faculty member at the nearest university, Faculty of Medicine, for five years. She completed her second PhD in medical genetics at Washington University, Ankara. Today, she is the director of Genetic Disease Education Center and Evaluation Center and a member of the Medical Genetics Department, Bursa Ulda University, Faculty of Medicine. And also, she is the founder head of the Department of Translational Medicine at the Institute of Health Science. She has been involved in many national and international research projects as a project coordinator and researcher. She has published peer-reviewed high-impact scientific journals in important journals and in chapters. 
She has two patent applications related to telemedicine and diagnostic tools for COVID-19 causing SARS-CoV-2. Nowadays, she has focused on innovative scientific products and diagnostic tools, as well as treatment-oriented projects. So I am pleased to invite Professor uh, Shay McKenner for her speech. Thank you so much for nice presentation. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be here as an old technician of male and uh, as a daughter of a Cyprus uh, peacekeeper of uh, operations war veteran daughter. So it's really, uh, I'm a little bit excited. So it's a really great honor. Thank you so much. I would like to thank all organizing committee especially uh, my dean and vice dean of students and all academic members of the faculty. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, I'm just going to give a brief talk about CRISPR-Cas9 system, not very detailed. I don't want to get bored about it. So my, my talk outline is going to be with genome engineering, gene editing tools, CRISPR-Cas systems, and application of CRISPR-Cas systems in animal models, in molecular diagnostic, and in uh, human diseases. And finally, future perspectives and conclusions. So, everybody knows, I think, what's genome editing or genome engineering. It refers to altering an organism's genetic code. Alterations can be relating nucleotides to knock out a gene, or adding nucleotides to knock in a protein, or adding, editing nucleotides to create or con correct a mutation. So gene editing can occur at the DNA, RNA, or epigenetic level. There are, there are many areas that you can use these gene editing tools in medicine, it can be used in agriculture and in environment they use. So in medicine, uh, it's really important for disease models, diagnostics, drug discoveries, and therapeutics. And in agriculture, improve and design the crops with enhanced resistance to factors that improves their growth, like past pest disease growth, fluids, to produce large quantities of food on the limb, had amount of land, and to cultivate more nutrient-rich foods, and then to breed disease-resistant, superior quality to livestock, and produce healthy herd. In environment, uh, as we know, the genetic code changing uh, is helping scientists to protect the environment. We need it emergent. We need it's emergent, really, by aiding biofuel research and exploring novel sources of sustainable, renewable, rene renewable energy to decreasing the carbon uh, footprint. So there are mainly uh, four yes, mega nucleases, but uh, it's not used very routinely. So I'm just going to talk about three main genome editing tools, zinc binker protein, transcription activator like effector nucleus, just called talent, and the last one, the Nobel Prize. They got the Nobel Prize, the two women, Dudna and Charpanti, as we know, the CRISPR Cas9 system. So, zinc binker protein and talent uh, it's used in experimental models mostly. It cannot be used, it, it couldn't come to an end to a routine use because the design is uh, difficult. But as we know, CRISPR-Cas9 system is more uh, ergonomic to design and to use. So it's going to be, it's going to come in routine now, as we know in, in six cell anemia also FDA approved. It. So if you look at the pros and cons of the, these three techniques, zinc finger protein and talon 
And tail, uh, tail is a pathogen, plant pathogen, Xanthomonas. Maybe you know. When you, if you, if you like the plants in your uh, home, if they have brown uh, spots on it, it's tail protein. It's a pathogen of the plant. So as you see, innovation comes from the nature all the time. If we look in detail to the nature, we can find the answers. So these two tools uh, use protein and DNA, and uh, zinc finger protein is less efficient, and talon is moderately efficient, but CRISPR-Cas9 system is very, very efficient and cheap. The, two, the other two techniques is really expensive. And uh, for zinc finger protein and talon, uh, there are very little off-target effects, uh, talon is low of our target effect. Uh, CRISPR Cas9 system is, has off target effect also, but it is moderate. So I told you that zinc finger uh, protein genome editing and talon is protein and DNA based, based technique, but the CRISPR Cas9 is the, the tip, there is protein, RNA, and DNA interaction. There are three. The protein, the DNA, and RNA inter interaction base. So, and CRISPR Cas9 uh, is because it's very easy. A bachelor degree can use this also. Just if you give the uh, samples to to him or to her, and just say that to do this, they can do that. Uh, I'm going to show some examples to you that the, a, a bachelor degree student does uh, this experiment. So uh, widespread use in uh, animal cell lines, plant technology, protozoal parasites, and extensive use in animal model and therapeutic and biosen as biosensor tool also diagnostics also. So CRISPR-Cas system, it's again, as we know, it's found in bacteria as a defense system. When a virus is made in the bacteria, it Bacteria uses this system to protect uh, itself as an immune system. So for genetic engineering, there are Cas9 enzymes, there is a single guide RNA, and then there's a very, very specific sequence, prot protospacer adjacent motif PAM sequences. Because they have these specific sequences, uh, it recognizes that if, if it hasn't these sequences, it cannot. So the difference is RNA based, and it has a specific sequence, and it uses Cas9 enzyme. Cas9 enzyme, what it does, and it's the endonuclease that cuts both strands of DNA at a specific site. And single guided RNA, it's an engineered RNA that forms a complex with Cas9. So fusion of two regions, CRRNA and tracer RNA. That uh, there's a PAM I told to try for Cas9 function. This sequence motif is immediately downstream of the target. So if we look at the uh, if we look at the history history of the CRISPR techniques, it begins in 1978. And it comes in 2021, and uh, it has the Nobel Prize also. Uh, so there are a lot of techniques, and still there is a war about patent with the Zang between Dudna, because the first Zang uh, showed it, but uh, Dudna uh, showed to use it in uh, medicine, in human uh, diseases. So they got the prize, but until this uh, Nobel Prize, there are a lot of researchers uh, how this technique comes to routine use. So the, the Nobel Prize goes to women, but there are a lot of unnamed researchers uh, in, in, in the technique. So it's really important. It's a teamwork. The history actually uh, comes like that, a teamwork. So classification of the CRISPR-Cas system, there are two classes, class one and class two. In the class one system, there are multiple Cas proteins, 
as you see here. And the class two, uh, there's a single cas uh, protein. So uh, it's commonly used one is type two. When we look at the CRISPR Cas9, 12, and 13, so you can see Cas9, Cas12, and Cas13 here. Uh, targeting Cas9 and Cas12 DNA, but Cas13, the target is RNA. Protospacer uh, in Cas9 pump and Cas12 pump, and the Cas9 is different, PFS. So you can see the difference. I'm not going to count all uh, the differences here. So commonly used one is uh, Cas9. So as I told you, with CRISPR-Cas technology, you can gene, you can edit a gene, you can uh, equal the gene regulation. You can do epigenome editing, uh, and you can just base edit or RNA targeting or chromatin topology. You can edit or uh, chromatin imaging. It's used in all areas. So five, there's five steps of uh, Cas9 DNA uh, cleavage. Uh, Cas9 binds and single guide RNA. And the Cas9 single guide RNA complex binds to a pump side on the target DNA. The guiding region of the single guide RNA binds to the target DNA sequence. And then Cas9 makes a double strand break in the DNA, three base pairs upstream of the top pump, and the complex releases from the DNA. So there are five steps. You can see here. Cas9 makes a double strand of phase in the DNA to save phase of time sequence. So, I'm going to talk about applications of CRISPR Cas systems in the animal model disease modeling. So, it's really important uh, because we can understand the diseases with disease modeling. Pathophysiology of the diseases is really important for cure, for drugs. Uh, so we, sh we should know the disease pathophysiology, and we need this because of this, re uh, we need some animal models. As uh, CRISPR-Cas talon and zinc finger protein can be used in animal models, and until CRISPR-Cas9 technique, they were used. But as I told you, it was really, it needs some engineering work. And talon is a big uh, sequence, and it's really, uh, hard to handle. Uh, now CRISPR Cas9 uh, in all laboratories and in all of the world, CRISPR Cas9 systems are using for animal model. You can you you can use as an animal model C. elegans, Drosophila, uh, Xenopus, uh, or uh, mice, and it's really important for the. Uh, pathophysiology of the disease. Of course, there are genetic, you can make a genetically modified animals also. Uh, there are, uh, when, when you are doing this, you can use CRISPR-Cas9 technology. But according to me, as an ethical view, uh, we should use CRISPR-Cas9 technology with the worldwide uh, regulations. Because as you know, uh, Lulu and Lulu born, with CRISPR-Cas9 technology, uh, without hoop, uh, they make the CCR5 for the two base relations when two, two nucleus stage uh, in the embryos, the zygote. And now, uh, because they didn't have the permission uh, and we don't know the future directions of it have uh, outcomes, and they are saying that uh, these two baby are mosaics also. So there's, uh, and they can, can be off part also, we don't know it yet. I'm going to give two uh, important examples from our works about two genes, CC21A gene. Uh, I have two siblings, they came with, uh, with neurodevelopmental disorder and uh, they have some autistic features. 
and uh, they were mental motor retardation also. When we did the this, uh, clinical axon sequencing, I found that uh, they had the CC2D1A homozygous mutation and the father and the mother are the carriers. So at that time, there wasn't any related disease uh, in the omic. So we thought that it's a new gene, and because some of the peach and male has the polycystic kidney also, maybe it can be a seriopathy, we thought. And we collaborate uh, with Yale University, Professor Dennis, and collaborate with uh, nearest also. They have a CC2D1A mutated uh, patient also. And we begin our uh, story about uh, we just with CRISPR Cas9 knocked down the CC2 D1A uh, in Xenopus. Why in Xenopus? Because the life cycle is very short. You can see very, very shortly the result in that animal. And it's not cost effective also. And it's not time consuming also. So with the OCT imaging, OCT imaging is uh, used in ophthalmology departments. Uh, they use for the retina uh, view. Uh, this is a computerized tomography sum of uh, OCT, but just for the of, of technology for retina view. So they use in their lab, it's very innovative actually, for uh, to, to leave the cilia. Uh, so these are the, uh, sorry, these are the cilia that uh, taken with by the OCT. This is the control. This is the mutant one. You can see that this is it's seen very clearly that this organized, not compact theory. And in real time, The short scene and we said is we thought that okay it can be a ciliopathy because it's expressed in cilia. So when we look at the uh, development, this is the normal, this is the mutant one, and the development of the brain uh, is also uh, abnormal uh, head uh, cranial with abnormal test, and it has because the cilia movement not correctly, it is a stenosis hydrocephaly also. So we checked if there is an in situ immersus also for the developmental stage, and we see that uh, there is a situ immersus in the cardiac. If you look at it here, there is an L loop here, this is the control. So, so there is a cardiac looping also in the cosinus. So these are the detailed work of the uh, cilia expression uh, in uh, mutant ones it's ex and uh, normal ones. It's exactly uh, expressed in developmental stage where the cilia is expressed. And in cardia, in, in heart, there is a loop also, loop defect. And it is very uh, exciting also. You can, I, this is the movement of the uh, brain blood lipid uh, here you can see the mutant one there is an unorganized just it is just in one area it's very very uh, unique just in one area the movement is unorganized and not well so it's it's very interesting also so when you look at the normal cc2d 1a in brain localization and this is Disorganized localization and short cilia are seen. I don't know if you can see very well. So this is our story. So we now concluded that CC2D1A uh, is a ciliopathy gene, and uh, we are going to publish. Some works are still done, uh, going on with fibroblast of the cases, and we are going to publish with it with Yale and Erie University uh, as a ciliopathy gene. So this is the second story about NARS1 in microcephaly. 
when I found in my patient this homozygous mutation, there wasn't any uh, disease in all him also, just I found two uh, literature published one week before, one week before, and it was uh, about last one, causes microcephaly, which it was in nature genetics, but we have very different results also, and our work is going to be valuable also, this work is going on. So as you, as you see, this, he lost these two patients, they are consanguous marriages, they have microcephaly and dysmorphic features, uh, and the sibling also neural tip defects also, and they died uh, soon after. And I found this nurse one homozygous mutation, uh, as you see here. So when we did the Xenopus model, you can see this neural tip defects in Xenopus. It's a new finding. They didn't report that there is a neural, neural tip defect. So the, it, like in, in human, Xenopus has neural tip defect also. So if you look at the mutant uh, with the microcephaly, and we, uh, according to the control, we had the microcephaly in mutant ones. So these are uh, two examples of, as an animal model, how valuable and how uh, important. For example, I would like to go further for neural tip defects. If NARS1 is, is a RNA enzyme, so maybe we can do some works about folic acids, also prenatal uh, period. So uh, as I told you, CRISPR has nucleic acid detection based diagnostic method. Uh, there's, if you look at it, there's a lot of uh, done about that. Professor Temel, we have to terminate. Please. Okay. Uh, so uh, in molecular diagnostic, uh, it's uh, there are of course some pros and cons when target nucleic acids are present in the sample, don't provide a strong specific signal and have been linked to a PCR to great amplifying nucleic acids. And CRISPR Cas12 and 13 molecular diagnostic kits can be utilized in totally isothermal circumstances and require little equipment and training for people. So CAS12 and CAS13 is used in diagnostic tools. So with pandemic, there are a lot of, if you just check the literature, there are a lot of uh, work done about biosensors and especially CAS12 and CAS13 uh, use biosensor and molecular diagnostic. So I'm just going to uh, so, I can just show this. It's not working. Can you help me? Can you give a hand, please? If you press one more, I think it will work. Oh. So, it's, it's a uh, video view of this CAS 13 technology electrical, electrochemical decoupled biosensor for MIRNA diagnostic. As actually, it is done by a Turkish researcher in Freiburg by John Dincher uh, and his team. So they targeted Mirna uh, with CAS 13 technology in a microfluidic uh, platform. So there are human diseases, therapeutic uh, use also, CRISPR Cas9 technology. In six cell anemia, uh, as you know, uh, it's FDA approved. There's just one pro uh, one base uh, variation makes single uh, six cell anemia, and FDA uh, approves this first CRISPR uh, technique to correct correct the genetic defect causing six cell anemia. So uh, retinal dystrophies it can be used. There are a lot of uh, work is going on now and for cancer it's a little bit hard for hematologic malignancies is a little bit uh, easier but for solid tumors there are all the time uh, new mutations it can be harder than the other diseases so there are neuromuscular diseases and uh, to need the specific expansion diseases there's a lot of work are going on for CRISPR Cas9 genome editing also, and Alzheimer also. So challenges of CRISPR Cas9. I'm just 
conflict. We have to. I just have to conflict. Just to two or three slides. slides. Okay. Going to online. The delivery challenge of target effect and limitation top system in its diminishing stock desperately sensitive to RNA secondary structure and instability of RNA and occurrence of mosaics. Future perspectives and completely didn't do this to Professor Dindar. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just one slide. Okay. So, future perspectives uh, CRISPR Cas technology has accelerated and enabled the production of a wide range of animal disease models, discoveries, and innovations throughout basic and applied science and unreveal the pathophysiology of the diseases. Uh, and diagnostics may prove to be a better option to develop ultra sensitive, inexpensive, and rapid non monitor based detection kits for several viruses, pathogens, cancer, and genetic disease, uh, as you can see here. And safe and effective in vivo delivery remains the biggest challenge for widespread clinical use CRISPR Cas in human therapy. There are some physical and uh, Biological ag agents that you can use, like adrenal associated virus or electrochemical stimulation, electroporation. So, uh, rapid development of nanotechnology promotes the potential of carrier lipid polymers. Nanocarriers cannot only effectively package and protect different forms of CRISPR Cas9 components and reduce of carbon. So, thanks for listening and sorry for the delay. Okay, I would, uh, does anyone have any question or contribution? It's a very interesting uh, topic. And yes, um, thank you for your presentation. I want to ask about the uh, software you use for uh, designing guide RNA and also uh, you talk about ethics uh, if uh, you find a solution for a patient can we use it now or we should stay to uh, develop our uh, ethics or something to access so that should be your first uh, yes uh, i'm uh, a student of the uh, medical uh, genetic and uh, biology, and uh, I've done a little bit for some dead cats, also, and uh, teaching sometimes uh, genetic. So, there are softwares for single uh, RNA uh, design that's like pre marked design. You can just go and check, and if you if you just Google it. So there are a lot of fun that we, we just use but one, three or more techniques with my uh, students from the molecular biology. So not typically just one. So the second question, it's my, this is really important and it's my concern about it, this technique. So if you can find a cure, of course, you cannot just use this uh, for a cure for a patient. There are some uh, you should do some clinical uh, clinical uh, studies for to be approved for this field. Yes, but uh, phase one, phase no. It's very now. It's 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 very very test now. You we see this in pandemic. So we have the we have the vaccine in one uh, year. So why? Because of the artificial intelligence, because of the drug reporting, you can simulate docking studies. But uh, we should done it on uh, human cells because uh, the animal cells not uh, really uh, same, uh, for example, in a repair system or lots of uh, different... Yes, but you cannot just do uh, study they on do, it. Yeah, they do in China and... Uh, then they do in China, they, they but in China... States. Yes, but China cannot be a good example for being a, a medical doctor. But any nation has done it surgeon. and for the it, they would be a first one, they would be a first one, they would get all the honors, but another one. That should be according to me. All the, all the countries should 
come together and that should be really good regulations yeah. and all the countries should obey these regulations because you know that this technique is very easy and it can be a damaging tool also so ethics and regulations uh, is really important more question maybe it's also why uh, Dr. Asher is going to stop but maybe it's worth to mention that it was uh, the Dr. Gilta's PhD project one of the fun part of the oh, sorry. so she she was involved in the for her PhD she worked on the CRISPR and then thank you uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. I'm wondering, uh, because every day we are eating uh, food modified, genetically modified, uh, can this modified food uh, make a little bit damage to our the genetic sequence? Uh, in agriculture, uh, no, uh, GMO, I don't use GMO. <laughs> genetically modified uh, organism, I don't use, I don't eat. But there are some birds for agriculture, uh, more, for example, not good for the, uh, but for the, the seeds. Seeds. not for the seeds, genetic modified seeds, for to use to have a better agriculture, for example. Uh, they use it, but for the seeds, I'm not, uh, I, my concern is the same as you. <laughs> but we are eating every day. Yes. Uh, orange, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mandarina, watermelon. So this this sequence can insert maybe one day in your sequence. Maybe we shouldn't say we are eating, but we have to know that we are is actually a good alteration. I want to take We have to know we are the alteration. I want to take questions to the final and we can discuss that one if you want. <laughs> You can have maybe uh, say something about that CC2 D1A CRISPR word. You can? Uh, yes. Maybe you can, you would like to add some. Yeah, in her case, she found it. found it. Good. So. Uh, okay. We would like to invite our respected team to show her appreciation to Professor Monis Dindar to be present here today with us to give his speech. I would like to thank uh, the speakers. Uh, they are very distinguished speakers and our guests. And thank you very much for Professor Monish Dunda for coming here, accepting our invitation and for the very valuable knowledge which uh, he reflected to us. Thank you, Dr. Dunda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, to show the appreciation uh, to Professor Shane McKinnon, I would like to invite uh, Professor, uh, the PhD student, Professor Dodo. Thank you. 
We are closing the first session of the Congress. We would like to thank uh, both of the speakers and thank you for listening. Eğer ki, eğer ki, hayatımızda hiç eğer olmasaydı nasıl olur? Size şöyle söyleyeyim. Her şey daha az parlak, daha az yeşil olur ve daha az parlak yeşil. Çünkü eğerler ormanların derinliklerinde tek bir kibritle derinlerin kıvılcımını ateşler. Eğerler Nobel ve Guggenheim'ın aklına takılır ve o kodu bu kodu çözerler. Eğerlerle içinizden haykırmak gelir. Eğerler bariyerleri kırarlar. Asla yalnız yürümezler ve aşırı bulaşıcıdırlar. Eğerler aşikardır ve son anda golü atarlar. Eğerler günü umursamazlar, robotlarla bile konuşabilirler. Karşı takım soluklanırken oynamaya durmadan devam ederler. Sadece basit bir kelime öyle mi? Hayır. Eğerler asla uyumazlar. Hep daha fazla çaba gösterirler. Eğerler bakar, araştırır ve en beklenmedik zamanda ortaya çıkarlar. Eğerler klonlanarak çoğalırlar. Acaba gerçekten yapabilir misin? Yaptın bile. Eğerler aklınıza girmeye çalışan güler yüzlü şakacılardır. Eğerler kapıları açarlar. Asla kaybetmeyeceklerini bilirler. Ve biraz gün ışığına her zaman hazırdırlar. Her şey bir eğerle başlar. Çünkü eğerler ne zaman dönüşür, ne zamanlarsa şimdi. Ve şimdi nasıl dönüşür? Nasılsa asıl. Eğerler bakış açınızı değiştirir. Eğerler oyunu değiştirir. Eğerler dünyayı değiştirir. Biliyoruz. Çünkü biz eğerlerle çalışıyoruz. Yakın Doğu Üniversitesi.